All right, guys, welcome to another episode on the podcast. I'm myself, Brian, my co-host, Squints, and our friend, Joy. Hi, guys. Thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. We're super excited, you know, talk about all your journeys and all the stuff you've been going through and, you know, want to start with like a general overview of how you got into the modeling and we'll just kind of take it down the road and the different pressures and all the other fun stuff. Yeah, well, not fun stuff. <laughs> some fun, some yeah. not so fun. Yeah, well, I mean, overall, pretty fun, I have to say. A lot, um, an exciting life I have. I grew up on a farm in North Carolina. I was homeschooled, and pretty much a backstory of me is I, I always wanted to be in this industry, and I wanted to be a model, I wanted to be an actress. So I went off to, I moved to Miami first. Um, I went to college. I end up dropping out of college, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, do this career. So I started working in Miami as a model and um, it wasn't easy. It was really hard at first. I went to a lot of agencies and they were like, you're too short, you're too blonde, you're, we have a girl that looks like you, you know, they, I got a lot of rejection. But I was determined because, um, you know, I, I knew I could do it. So I kept doing photo shoots and I kept doing this and that. And, um, you know, I tried to build my book. And in all of that, I had photographers telling me different things like, oh, you should, you should go blonder or you should, you know, maybe, maybe you should get a boob job. You know, you're kind of, you're kind of flat chested. Um, you should do this. And they would tell me little tweaks of how I should pose and what I should look like to be successful. So I was like, hmm, let me think about this. And I was very much like, do whatever it takes to make it at that point. I mean, not whatever. Um, but when it came to getting implants, I went ahead and got them. So Fast forward, um, I've I had them for over almost 12 years, um, but I had a very successful career. This whole time, I don't really, now looking back, I don't think it was because of the implants. I think it's because of my face, my personality, and my work ethic. But um, I, I had an amazing career, and I still do. And, but throughout the last couple years, I kind of, um, you know, I've had some health issues and these health issues made me decide to get an explant, which is getting my implants removed. And that was, that was a really hard decision. Um, I, yeah. So <laughs> that's kind of like a little backstory about me and my career and my decision to alter my body. Yeah. Um, mentally as they're like, things are being suggested, like it's, it's a lot to, you know, you're, you're young and impressionable and, uh, you want to be successful and you really wanted this and you were trying to do everything you could to be successful at it. And, uh, you have a lot of like peer pressure and outside, um, outside information coming at you kind of, was it a little overwhelming at a young age to, you know? Um, yeah, overwhelming for sure. Um, I kind of, I, I remember in my small town, people would be like, you're never going to make it. Um, you know, this industry, that industry, like being a model, like they almost laughed at it because it was just so far from anything they could imagine themselves doing. And, um, the f I just could not wait to move out of this farmland full of tobacco fields and cows. So I would, you know, I kind of, I had a little bit of a tough time, but um, I was so impressionable being, um, I was 22 when I got my implants and I just was like, you know what? I don't really care. Um, I'm gonna do whatever it takes. And um, it, it's kind of sad to see like a lot of women right now going through that young woman too, who are just so impressioned with um, outside people telling them they should look a certain way to be accepted to work. Um, you know, it's kind of sad. Yeah, you have daughters yourself. So yeah, you, I'm sure you understand the yeah. pressures they go through. Um, yeah, my oldest is 21. Uh, 
she's been getting tattooed a lot lately. It's been like like quaint, like cute stuff. I like that the style has changed a little bit from my day when it was a little bit. All the tattoos were a little bit bigger and heavier, so that's good. But uh, I still tell her to like kind of wait it out a little bit. You know, obviously, I'm older now. I started, you know, changing my body or getting tattooed and doing things at a young age too. And it's like you know, your thoughts and your needs and your wants and the things that and the person you are changes like quite a bit. So I try to just tell her to like just just wait a while. You know, like see maybe you don't want to go drastic with. Coloring your hair over and over and over again, because you know, twenty years later, you're, it, it tends to it tends to you know ruin that, especially if you don't have it done in a proper way, you know. And uh, so I just try to tell her to wait and kind of let herself evolve and and uh, you know be comfortable with who you are, because that's that's what we're all after. We're all looking for acceptance, but also mostly just to be comfortable in our own skin, right? We want to look at in the mirror and and be happy with the reflection we see kind of that's so true it, i guess it's hard to tell someone not to get tattoos when you have them so yeah. i'm sure it's um it's an she wants to be just like you i'm sure in, yeah in some ways <laughs> she does um it, it is hard to tell her her mom has tattoos too and then uh so it's kind of like her thing but you know she's She's finding her her pace, which is good. You know? Yeah, and it's so true. We all just want to be accepted. We all just want to um, be loved, and and it's just finding like what I've discovered recently is falling in love with myself and putting my body first above like what other people think. So as far as being accepted by others, putting that kind of second or not at all, not worrying about that so much. And that's hard. Yeah, it's really hard to do. It's like a daily practice of, you know, journaling, meditating, and just fa like falling in love with myself by doing things that I love finding things that I like to do, versus what I think other people want me to do. So what's your thought on that? I think social media has put a lot of extra pressure on people these days to not follow what they're passionate about and think what they're doing isn't good enough. How has that changed in your business? Because um, you've seen kind of the arc. I know you, when you started, social media wasn't as big of a presence. And yeah. now it's probably like the, oh, it's the, huge. the driving factor in all of entertainment, right? Yeah, when I started, um, I started before Instagram was created. Yeah. And... You know, you just work off your book, which is like, you know, 15, 20 images. Your agents get you all the jobs. And then um, I remember my agent was like, hey, there's this new thing called Instagram. You should get on it. And I was like, oh, but I'm already on Facebook. It's already too much work. Um, another app. I don't know. Well, you should get on it, just do it. So they basically forced me to get on this app. And I was like, this is so dumb, Instagram. Like no one wants to show what they're doing instantly. Um, so anyways, I got on it um, and I started posting my modeling pics and I, I kind of started to grow a following. And um, it I say it helped my career because clients could see like what I like to do and see me but <clears throat> I think overall it really it's it can be very unhealthy social media in general yeah. and over the years it's become a focus now you know castings will ask what's your Instagram following mm -hmm. you know what like when you go to a casting you fill out the form your height, your agency, your Instagram, your na amount of followers on Instagram. And now they've even added in your TikTok, if that's something you have, which I also got on that too. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, it's crazy how much social media has to do with models and actresses working nowadays. Yeah, yeah. it used to be more based off of uh, your look or your talent or yeah. being right for a uh, campaign or being right for a role and now it's like can we market you or can you help us market the project exactly You're and almost... then and then social media has changed too in the beginning it sh used to be um you know are you pr do you photo 
are you photogenic? You know, are these pictures great? But now it's all about what else can you offer on social media? Like, do you have a different story? Are you entertaining? Can you cook? Can you paint? Can you? So it's like all these other aspects that they want to see now too. Like, why is this person big on social media? Is it just the way they look? And that doesn't really like do it anymore for for the client booking. Yeah. Do you feel social media has been unhealthy for a lot of the models mentally? I think not just models, but women in general, actually ev everyone. Um, but yeah, for, for me, for sure, because you, you're sitting there and you're looking at this fake life of someone else's and you're like, wow, I need to get better at this. I need to post things like this um, while wow, they look great, but they're putting their best images forward. They're creating this life that's not real. And I mean, we we've all done it. We all put our best foot forward when we're posting on social media and it's it's not real it's not reality i don't like walk around in um you know heels all the time and a bunch of makeup usually i'm in sweatpants 90 percent of the time so um you know it's not it's it's kind of a fake life that we present so i'm trying not to do that as much and trying to be authentic and this journey of me getting my explant is part of me being authentic and true to myself and then also sharing about it on social media. It was really hard for me to actually share this to the world. And it took me two weeks to post a video after my surgery, even though I had started filming two weeks before the surgery. It just this mental block of being vulnerable and opening up to the world like hey i um i j i might not look how you guys want anymore you yeah. know that was so scary to me what led you to do the explant like obviously there was a period where i'm assuming you weren't feeling well or something yeah. and then what got you to that decision or knowing that was the issue well i think to start, I I had health issues that have been going on for years that I kind of ignored. One was my thyroid. Um, my thyroid is really low and I have to take medicine. And um, I was wondering why. I thought it might be this or that. And I'm, I'm extremely healthy. I work out multiple times a week. I eat really clean. Um, so I'm like, why is it just getting worse? I went to the doctor's and they were like, we need to put you on more meds. You know, it's getting worse. And I'm like, I don't understand. I'm doing everything right. And then I was also getting super bad migraines. Like that would last three days. And I would, every time I went in a sauna, I would just get this massive headache. So these things that I didn't know what where they were coming from, um, I was just like, I'm always sluggish in the morning. I have to get like eight or nine hours of sleep or I'm a complete mess. And my PMS is bad. My boyfriend wants to kill me every month. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, there's something wrong here because I eat healthy, I work out. I'm doing everything right. I'm getting the eight or nine hours. Um, so I, I wasn't sure what was happening and um, so my boyfriend actually mentioned he had a friend that had an ex plant and a lot of those symptoms went away. So I started doing research and um, I, I just came across other girls that were talking about that being the problem. But also I really have in the past year, I've really started to listen to my intuition and really check in with my body. So I really feel like there's something inside me I can't explain it that just knew that this might be the problem and it, it just it this sense of knowing that I can't explain that would come up while I meditate or while I would journal um or anytime it, it would pop up on social media I'd be like wait that's that's me I need to get these out I just started to really dislike having this plastic um Ba these plastic bags in my body where I'm like, I need them out of my body. Uh, and I couldn't explain it. I was like, I can't 
I don't know if it's why I'm feeling unhealthy, but I regardless just need them out. I want to be as natural and wholesome as I can be. This body is a gift that we're given for this lifetime. So I'm like, I want to treat it like a temple and this is not doing, I do everything else right. Why would I do this to myself? What have you noticed thus far? I know it's only been a it's, month or so. It's been three weeks today that I had my surgery. And, you know, the first two weeks were probably the hardest um, as far as recovery goes. So I couldn't really see a difference because I was still feeling a lot of pain and, you know, needed to get those eight or nine hours of sleep still, um, not able to work out. So I feel like I didn't really see much of a difference right away, but okay, instantly, as soon as I had the surgery and I woke up from the surgery, I had this huge sense of relief and happiness. Wow. And I was just, I thought I might regret it. You know, going into it, I thought, well, I don't know how I'm gonna feel after and may instantly regret it. But not once since I had the surgery have I ever regretted it. I've only thought, wow, I wish I did this sooner. And it's just, I don't know why, because a lot of my symptoms haven't like, I haven't checked my thyroid. I don't know how my thyroid is, but a lot of the symptoms, I can't see a night and day difference, but internally how I feel, I feel so much better. I feel so happy that I made this choice. And I love the way I look. And I and I thought I might hate the way I look. I would that was one of the biggest fears is I thought, well, I'm gonna hate myself being so like with the small breasts. And I love it. I love looking at myself and I feel younger. I feel healthier. I feel lighter because I am lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, almost two pounds lighter. Um, so I'm just like, I feel really, really good about my decision. And when I wake up, yeah, I'm in maybe a tiny bit of pain or discomfort because I'm still recovering, but I am freaking happy and I'm excited. And I'm like, I almost feel like it's a rebirth for me. And my, not only me and myself and my health journey, but in my career journey too. Well, it's amazing. Yeah. It's huge. We're really happy for you. Um, is there some science you can share from research yeah. of like things that women have been experiencing and then finding this out and and what the the what this foreign substance in your body is kind of causing yeah well apparently these implants have like a lot of different um metals and toxins and the they're compiled of just ingredients you do not want in your body. And so what happens when you, anytime you get foreign objects placed in your body, whether it's implants or metal pieces or, you know, whatever it is, your body is gonna go ahead and reject it. And this is science-based. Um, there's a capsule that is created around the implants. They had to cut that out when I had my surgery. And actually some doctors, they don't, cut that out they leave that scar tissue in it's your body's rejecting the implant and builds a scar tissue wall around the implant and it just keeps growing and it can be cancerous down the road it mine was just squeezing my implant so tight that the doctor said you know that's probably why i'm feeling so much pain and discomfort um but yeah so your body is basically rejecting the implant and over time it just gets worse and worse some people instantly have really bad symptoms other people it takes years to develop these symptoms your body's just like hey get this foreign object outside of me like this is crazy why would you do this yeah. and i mean it sounds crazy but you know what's really good news and science backs this up too i think I don't, I don't know no claims but what i've read is and what i've heard from my doctor too who's done over a thousand explants wow. dr rankin yeah he he told me that probably 95 percent of the pe patients he has who have health problems as soon as they get the implants removed their symptoms go away so i mean 
It's immediate. It's obvious. It's yeah. crazy, it's right? You're yeah. pulling the toxin right out of your body. Yeah, and um, sometimes it takes a couple months because you still have some of the toxins in your body from the implant in that scar tissue, and you have to do all these cleansing things. So I'm kind of on that journey right now, just like cleaning out my body, trying to like just be as healthy as possible. I can't do saunas yet, but soon I'm going to do saunas and cryo and um i've started with hyperbaric chamber for recovery and so my recovery journey journey is really exciting too because it's just my body comes first and it's exciting to learn all the things that can speed up recovery um i'm going to be doing peptides soon so i'm excited about that too <laughs> yeah what made you go all the way to florida to do the explant um, the doctor, Dr. Um, Rankin, he is one of the best doctors. I did a lot of research on um, to find him. And the reason why I chose him is because his holistic approach um, to removing them, he only removes them, first of all. He doesn't put them in the body. So a lot of doctors will continue doing implants and explants, but his he believes um, you know, putting them, I don't know exactly what he believes, but the fact that he doesn't put implants in your body is like a good sign, number one. Um, and he takes out the capsule, which is all that scar tissue, which can cause t cancer down the road. And a lot of doctors don't do that. But then he also does an external drain. So what happens is a lot of times your body is going to just have all these fluids right after surgery that are draining back into your body that your liver and your stomach and all of your organs have to clean. So he does an external drain for five to 10 days after um, until it basically stops draining all these toxic fluids. So that was really interesting. A lot of doctors don't do that either. And when I heard that, I was like, okay, I'm sold. Um, and Honestly, I have to say I made the best decision. The whole process was so smooth. He, um, him and his team really just helped me all along the way. You know, he was calling me the night after surgery. He talked me through it. He, um, he's like, you don't need a lift. You're young. Like he, he had, he wanted to do the least amount of possible damage while doing it. So <laughs> how was Ted at being a caretaker? Oh, Ted was great. I mean, it's kind of crazy. I I need someone like him all the time because um, me, I was a complete mess. I was crying. I they, I was a mess. Like I the whole time, the day before, I was so nervous. I was nervous about a million things, going into surgery being one of them, and you know how it would feel. And he would, and he was so calm the whole time. He, it didn't even phase him. I'm like, how are you not even nervous? Like, aren't you like a little bit nervous? I'm about to like go under. He's like, it's routine for him. You know, the doctor, he does this all the time, every day. I'm like, okay, good point. And then I was like, but what if I don't look good? He's like, you always can get new implants. I'm like, okay, okay. Every time I had a question, he always had an answer that was so logical and so non-emotional because I was an emotional mess. So I needed that like other half to be there for me to be like, these are the facts. You know, I'm here with you. I'll be waiting outside. Like if he was a mess too, it would have been, it would have been all over. <laughs> <laughs> so it was good to have him. And he went, flew to Florida with me and he waited outside the surgery and I kept not wanting to leave him, but I was in good hands, so. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, yeah. And then he had to brush my teeth after. <laughs> he had to shower me. Um, pretty much do everything that was just, I was so vulnerable, and he was so kind, and he didn't complain once, and I'm pretty sure he brushed my teeth better than I could brush my teeth, so that's <laughs> concerning. <laughs> <laughs> um on the other side of Ted being such an amazing caretaker, was there any pressure from um, people on your team or uh, managers or anybody in your career that was the opposite feeling? Well, the thing is, um, everybody in my family and 
Ted, um, pretty much everyone that's very close to me was very supportive. Now, outside of that, I started telling people, my agents, um, my my publicist, you know, and they were, they ha they were pretty supportive. But then I had some friends and some people in my life who were like, hey, it, it's all in your head, you know, like they look great. Why would you do that? Like, um, I don't know, a lot of people, I guess they think that all the symptoms could be in your head. And my theory on that is the psychosomatic feelings that I have, it, regardless of me doing the surgery and taking the implants out, those symptoms will be gone, right? So they're pretty real to me, all the symptoms yeah. that I've had. And so if they're all in my head, they're all going to be out of my head if I have the explant. Either way, yeah. I'm going to see a good result. So That's great. That's a, it's a great way of looking at it. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, either way, you get the result you want, right? Exactly. And yeah. I think I was expecting a lot more people to be against it. But it's crazy the amount of support that I've gotten from, you know, my fans and my team and just everyone in my life. I was so scared to share on social media because I thought, Everyone's going to say, like, you're going to look so bad or why would you do that? Um, but I, I didn't get much hate, honestly. I got a lot of new support and new um, women who are going through the same thing. It's crazy the amount of messages that I've gotten that are pe girls saying, like, I'm so scared. I've been wanting to do this for years and I'm so scared. But hearing your story makes me feel like I might have enough courage to do this. And I've been sick, but I was too scared. Now seeing you do it, like makes me want to make that step. So that's amazing. And a lot of people don't realize you're putting a foreign body in your foreign object in your body. Yeah. Who knows what toxic chemicals are in there, even though they say it's safe. And the fact that they say you have to change it every 10, 15 years, it's kind of weird. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's true, right? I mean, we, we don't know what it's doing to our body, but um, I know that I feel better without them and I don't have any regrets. I'm not like, oh, I wish I didn't get them because it's part of my journey. It's part of my path and it makes me who I am. Um, even though I had to go through this explant, I feel like it's that is part of my journey too. So everything that's happened I'm not looking back and regretting, but I do wish I was informed. I wasn't informed on any of this when yeah. I got it off. I didn't think about when I had to get them out. I didn't think about any of the side effects, how it would be if I wanted to go in the sauna, because they're not supposed to be heated up. They're not mm -hmm. tested to be heated up. Really? So, well, yeah. Most women think about that. Yeah, nobody thinks about that. That's like huge. I was going in the sauna for years. Yeah. And they're just like being melted inside uh, my body. Yeah, I'd never thought. Yeah. yeah that's something that you're even yeah, yeah, conscious they, of, really. Yeah, yeah, they're tested for just, you know, being in your body. And of course, the testing, too, is by the people who make them. So yeah. it's, it's I don't know. I, I don't know what I believe yeah. nowadays. So you feel which is slightly off topic. Um, microdosing kind of helped your intuition on discovering to remove them. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Microdosing mushrooms, which I'm such a fan of. Um, not only did it help me to come to this decision, I, which I really do think it did help me. It helped me stop drinking alcohol. I've been sober for a year and a half. Congrats. Amazing. And not How much that better I, do you feel? Oh my God. Amazing. It's so much better. It's helped me get off Adderall. I was on that for almost 10 years. Wow. Um, I was diagnosed as ADD and man, I was, <laughs> <laughs> but I started microdosing about four years ago and I really feel that that helped me to be more focused because I was present. And when you're present, you're focused. You remember things, you don't lose things as much. Um, I was more productive and I think I was running around doing all these things like I need a shoe, I need to do this, I need to 
shoe content, shoe content, always like trying to hammer it out to be like more successful as the other models, as the other actresses, you know, trying to do as many acting classes and like doing all this stuff um, on Adderall to just work, 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 work. And I wasn't working smart. I was just working hard. Yeah. And then as soon as I started microdosing, I thought, okay, what do I really enjoy doing? Why? Like the question is, why am I doing this? And it really makes you question everything, your existence, you know, your purpose in life. And why do we do the things we do? There's always a meaning behind it. And just discovering that made me work smarter, um, focus on my health. And with that, you know, listening to my body and, you know, doing things that are for myself not versus for like what will make me successful because you can be so successful and still not have have happiness you know and oh we see that all there's the time. a lot there's yeah. a lot of that yeah so i'm i'm on the journey to my health which then with having a healthy body you can find happiness i think because you without health you're nothing so that's number one and then just focusing on the things that matter, which is family and the people that love you and focusing on, you know, nature, being outside and animals, the things that really can bring you happiness. You know, of course, your career can bring you money, which makes life more comfortable. But I really am just having this major shift on doing living life for the first time in my life. <laughs> pretty amazing feel yeah, it's amazing so many great things have come out of it and it's just the beginning beginning yeah so I feel like I've had a rebirth in this whole process but it started you know in the past probably year and a half two years do you feel you'll transition a little bit from the modeling and just being more, giving out more awareness on implants and women's health and just mental health well I think that my career is just going to be more fulfilling and I think there's going to be more jobs. I think this is only going to make my career more successful, even though that wasn't my plan. I think that's what's going to happen. It already has started. Um, I have a lot of brands that want to work with me because they they like to see um, my authenticity and kind of my voice. And so I have different brands that are approaching me yeah. to work with me. So I think that it's just going to get better for my career. But that is not my goal in this. And if it doesn't, I'm OK because my health comes first. And if I lose jobs over being healthy, like, fuck them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. Yeah, you can totally. <laughs> So, that was great. That's a big yeah, I'm excited. I really am because and then as far as like my goals, I mean I I guess I can model until I'm 100, but my goal is to really focus on acting and because that really brings me a lot more fulfillment than modeling because I think it's way more challenging and re way more rewarding the scenes and you get to be a different character. So I've been I mean, I can't really work right now during this strike, but I've been just buckling down with classes and like creating scenes and I've been focusing more on the acting side of things so that's really fun and exciting and then my art which I love doing it's one of my favorite things to do um, my boyfriend Ted makes fun of me because my favorite thing to do on a weeknight or a weekend night is to stay home and paint and like cook I'm such a homebody, but painting, it brings me so much happiness. I, I'll microdose and I'll just paint whatever comes up, comes up. I don't have like a plan. And it's when I feel the most present because yeah. it really is just like being in the moment. Time is not, is not a thing when I paint. So that's really fun. I'm trying to do more of that. Flow state. You yeah, flow just, state, exactly. <laughs> present that's no other way to say it yeah oh yeah and have all your puppies with you oh yeah the puppies <laughs> the, it, it's really nice waking up with all the animals and having that love surrounding me every time i 
you know, enter the house. And I never had, since I was, since my farm, which we had every kind of animal, it, in my adult life, I haven't had animals until I started dating Ted. And he had three animals. Now we have three more together. So we have the household of six crazy, cute little animals. And it's so fun. It's It really is the first time that I feel at home and in a family environment for all these years, just traveling and, you know, living in all over the world. I, I've i lived in um, Europe. I've lived in Australia and, and Africa and New York, Miami, LA. And I just like, I'm such in this mindset of nothing is really home because I'm always on the move. And so this is the first time I feel like, okay, I like this home. This feels kind of like home. I, I see myself staying here. Even with Ted making the funny videos of you and posting them? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I have to talk to him about that. But <laughs> I got I got one coming for him, so there you don't go. worry. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he likes to videotape me with the cat sleeping on me. And it's it, they are, honestly are really cute videos, so I can't get too mad. <laughs> I was cracking up when I saw that one the other day. I was like... <laughs> You're still alive for that? <laughs> oh, he's got other things he's dead for, so that's the least of my worries. Sorry, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Can you share some of your 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 highlights in your career? I don't want to vilify uh, entertainment completely because I think in a lot of senses, there's so many dreamers out there that want yeah. to, to have these big dreams, and it is a beautiful thing. That is true. So I was told you're never going to make it you know, it's just don't do it. This is not a career for you. And I was determined. So I think if you want to, if you're out there and you really want a career in this industry, you can make it happen. Anyone can. So don't give up if it's something you really want to do. Do I recommend it? No, I, I think it's, I mean, I wouldn't recommend this career for anyone unless like you have really tough skin because you have to be okay with getting rejected every single day. Yeah. And if you can't handle that, you know, choose a different path. Um, and not like I can handle it, but I mean, I'm here, so I kind of can. But you get kind of used to it. You have to separate yourself and be like, this is not, don't take it personal. Yeah. Um, it is hard though. But yeah, this career, it's it's fun. There are exciting things to it. And I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for my career. I wouldn't be living in LA. So I do, I am grateful for the success that I've had. And I'm grateful for the people I've gotten to work with in this career, other amazing creatives. So there's a lot of great people in this industry that are very um, talented and great people. So I'm not saying like it's a bad overall bad career. I just think when you are in this career, it is important to surround yourself with a really good team, someone that cares about you and not cares about just making a dollar. And that's hard because it is all about the money. It's a business, yeah. Yeah, so, so do just surround yourself with great people. I mean, have a great team and that's important and it takes time to build that it's not going to happen right away it's taken me years to create a good team so um and then as far as the great things in my career like i've had some amazing opportunities to you know walk the run runways of in new york and um in miami for swim week many times and you know doing these i've done huge campaigns I lived in New York and I shot um, so many cool with so many cool brands, and you know in Europe too. That was so exciting, just doing commercials and um, working with other talented photographers. It's been it's been a really great career, and I I feel so blessed. Every time I have a photo shoot or I get the opportunity, I never take it for granted, and I'm always just. I'm, I always feel so lucky and I have to pinch myself because I did grow up on a farm with nothing. We had powdered milk and we were super poor and I had to wear 
Walmart clothes and hand-me-downs. So getting to like travel the world and fly all these crazy places and be put up in these nice hotels. Um, I just feel so blessed. So, and I think it's because of my hard work and my <laughs> not giving up. So yeah. don't give up if you have that dream. That's a very strong message for people. You know, you came from nothing to traveling the world and living in all these cool places and doing all this fun stuff yeah. all because you believed and you dug deep to get there. Yeah, and put in the hard work. I mean, work smart, but do the work because I think a lot of people just want fame and they want, um, especially I feel like this generation of young people, they want to be famous, but like, <clears throat> you can't just say, I want to be famous. That's not a career. Yeah. I mean, you, you choose something and you work hard at it and it's you have to develop a skill I could model with my eyes closed. I mean, in my sleep, sometimes I literally will be modeling in my dreams. Usually if it's a really boring shoot that I've done the same poses over and over again, I start dreaming those poses and I'm like, what's happening? But, <laughs> but you know, like it's it comes out from years of doing it and practicing and just getting yourself out there. And then there's the whole, you know, just being healthy and working out like I don't I work hard for my body too and that's that's another thing that people think like oh she was just born like that so that's why she has a career like no I work really hard <clears throat> to maintain the way that I look and um, to be healthy and it you got to put the time in for sure it doesn't come easy it's, it's a lot of work you know it's keeping up with the you know all of the things that come into you know making that the art form that it is yeah style is important to you of course how you present yourself how you are on set um but yeah i think as far as um w body image comes to and how you present yourself to i think which i love i see the whole industry a little bit shifting to embracing all body types embracing on authenticity and so it's come a long way. Yeah, it really Recently. has. Yeah. And I and I love it. And I think I think that has really been a mind fuck for me in the beginning, just having to be a certain size, having to be a cert look a certain way. And now it's more about you can really look however you want and I mean not however you want, but it's just more about being healthy. Yeah. And so yeah, that's exciting. Having some uniqueness. Yeah. Um, I remember when my agencies would measure me, so that was yeah, that was very traumatizing. I bet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've all seen it in films and and stuff. It's a like, real thing. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Wait. What do you mean? So I would go into my agency, and they would pull out the measuring tape and literally measure my waist, yeah. measure my bust, and my hips, and they would make sure it's the same number as they have on my printed cards. So I couldn't gain an inch or half an inch. Or that's insane. Yeah, because otherwise then they would have to like not it's not even about changing the cards. It's about not being the size that the client wants because yeah. they they ask we want you to show us all the girls that are these sizes, which are the perfect um, model size for their clothing. So mm -hmm. they make the clothing, Based then they the find it, then yeah. they find the models that fit the clothing, not the other way around. Yeah. So we all have to be ready to go at that size. That's a lot of added pressure. A lot. Like yeah. a lot, a lot. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. And and if you're not like, a, I'm on the shorter side, I'm like barely 5'8". And so that that's short for modeling. And so a lot of times my agents would, you know, they, they would have to lie about my age or they'd be like, nope, they don't want you. This is for five, nine and above. And that's the majority of the shows too. They're like five, nine and above. And I'm like, man, if I was only one inch taller, I would have been working more. So yeah. it's like, it's kind of crazy. And uh, I think, I hope that changes. I, I, I see it kind of changing a little bit, so. I see with like the Fenty shows and, and Skims and all of these other things that have become so popular with these brands that uh, are obviously, you know, um, marketed to 
all body sizes and shapes and things. So you see a little bit of the images changing of uh, yeah. what a model is. Bo body positivity is, yeah. is really being embraced and it's exciting to see, but I do still think that the pr there is that pressure. Yeah, runway is runway, I'm sure. There is That's that pressure. That's probably not gonna ever change yeah. too much, you know? So I feel like... How does that feel in that situation? Like, uh, this, it's a lot of pressure. And for the girls out listening that, you know, are looking to take this path, you said that it, it's a lot, it's a lot of rejection. I mean, mentally, you know, feeling like there's one inch difference that, you know, maybe somebody got a job that you didn't get because of being two inches taller or being the perfect size for a certain designer. It's it's a lot, right? Mentally, oh, yeah. No. Damaging. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I not only the models out there, but I think just the average girl, like woman in general, seeing these um, seeing these images on social media, on TV, uh, they're photoshopped. You know, these these models are crazy proportions they have a bunch of hair and makeup team the lighting the photographers and then they edit it it's like so unrealistic of what you know someone looks like so then when you have these girls looking at these images they're like oh i i, I have to look like this i want to look like this and it's it's you no one can look like that we don't even look like that this is not yeah. like it's not real life. it's like it's looking at an AI photo and being like, I want to look like this. It's honestly just the same. Well, how do you feel about all the filters on social media? Well, I, I was using filters and then it's been almost a year now where I stopped using filters because I felt like it was kind of, it was kind of damaging to me to see other people doing it. So I'm like, I don't want to present myself with a fake um view and then also i was scared to be like okay what if i meet people and i don't look like that like yeah. i that would be that would scare me so i stopped using filters because i was like you know what this is what they're gonna get and if i'm not um you know, brave enough to post myself on social media maybe i should choose a different career yeah um so i've kind of stopped using filters um and I'm i'm not like against them i think they can be fun but for me personally, I just chose to make that decision. Yeah, well, I, I respect that. And I think it's, you know, good for for somebody such as yourself to present that to other young girls that are, you know, to know that it's okay to be yourself. And that is beautiful, you know, yeah. to, to be acceptant of who you are and, and what you represent. Yeah, I remember looking because you see yourself right on the yeah. filter. And when you swipe the filter, it's this mirror reflection of someone that it's a false reality of what you look yeah. like. And I, I remember seeing myself without a filter and I'd be like, oh man, I look awful. I need the filter. And I started feeling like I needed it. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, this is unhealthy. I need to just get rid of it in general and get used to seeing myself in a selfie mode of how I really look. And so that that was definitely... <laughs> it's a little mirror, mirror on the wall, right? It's yeah, like that. Exactly. That's not the image we're getting back kind of thing. Um, before we wrap up, uh, just something you'd like to close with or share about your journey or, or what, you know, trusting your body and, and sharing with the women out there that are in a similar position. Yeah, for sure. So <clears throat> I think trusting your intuition, and I think a lot of you will listen to this and you will know deep, deep inside yourself that you need to make a change in some area of your life. I think we all know, right? It's just listening in to your body and having that time where you're not distracted every day is so important, whether it's meditation or journaling or walking outside in nature, whatever it is where you can tune into yourself and just be with yourself. So then you can say, hey, listen, this is what I have to change in my life. And that's what happened to me with my my implants and I think a lot of women they they know and so I am hoping that when they hear this they have the strength to make that decision because I had the strength to do it and man the feeling you get when you do something for yourself that is scary that is so hard 
that high after and that feeling you feel like you can do anything it's the craziest feeling so i encourage you know if it's an explant whatever it is i encourage you if it scares you to run towards it and do it because it scares you for a reason and after you do that scary thing it's it will change your life like now i'm like what's next there you go what else what else scares i love that me? i'm gonna run towards it and i'm gonna and i'm gonna do it because it's just it's another bead on your necklace of things that you did that were hard that makes that beautiful pearl necklace your life yeah and you can conquer anything where can people find you for social and done all things joy okay so my name is joy corrigan you can find me on instagram at joy corrigan and i'm on TikTok too joy corrigan there as well so you guys send me a dm if you have any questions too about if you're going through the same journey you know i'm here to answer questions i spend time really trying to help women right now who are who are scared just telling them the process and what it's like and um yeah so reach out i love it thank you so much we thank really you so appreciate, much. You, um, appreciate you <laughs> this is so sharing funny. this and uh you know helping others and being in a vulnerable place we know it's a lot to to speak openly about you know your path and and the changes you make in your life so we appreciate you well thanks for having me this is so fun and um i just am so happy that i have this you know, chance to share my voice. It's a beautiful platform and it's it's good that you found the a voice to to help others with it, you know? Well, thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.